So we're going to be starting first with our cookies and then we're going to do our ice cream. Um, the cookies are going to have to cool completely after they go into the oven and uh, the ice cream is going to have to set fully um, in your freezer before you assemble the two. So I'm assuming that you all can handle the actually actual assembly of the ice cream sandwiches without me walking you through it, but I'll show you how to make the separate components. Um, the cookie is essentially, it's, we're going to do a basic chocolate chip cookie, but you can make it your own and add whatever you want into it to customize it. And I'll show you what I'm, I'm going to do for mine. In my mixer right now, I have three fourths cup of brown sugar, three fourths cup of white sugar, and I have two sticks of butter that have been softened to room temperature. Whenever you see in a recipe, sugar and butter, you wanna cream them together first, okay? If your butter is cold, if you just took it out of the refrigerator, you can pop it in the microwave in a different bowl, microwave safe bowl for about 30 seconds and then put it in with your sugar. Um, I have it, I'm gonna do it in a stand mixer. You can use an electric mixer, you can use a wooden spoon, spatula, whatever. But the goal is to have it be all incorporated and light and fluffy. So I'll show you what that looks like. Let me stick this in the stand mixer. While that's going on, in a separate bowl, I'm gonna mix together my dry ingredients. So this way when I'm ready, I can add the dry ingredients to my mixer. Okay, in this case, our dry ingredients are pretty simple. We have two and a quarter cup of flour. I have one teaspoon of baking soda, not baking powder, baking soda, and I have one teaspoon of salt. That's it, those are our dry ingredients. All right, so I have this in a bowl, and I'm just gonna whisk it up to just blend everything together, because I wanna make sure it gets added evenly to the rest of my batter when I'm ready for it. Okay, so then I set this aside, that's it, all I have to do to mix this up. So again, that's two and uh, a quarter cup flour, teaspoon of baking soda, teaspoon of salt. If you are using salted butter, you don't necessarily have to add the full teaspoon of salt. I would add a little bit, but you don't have to add the full teaspoon, you can just do like a pinch. That's if you're using salted butter. I'm using unsalted. Um, other ingredients that you can get while your mix is going, you're gonna need your two eggs and one teaspoon of vanilla, and then whatever mix-ins you wanna put into your cookie. Now, what I would think about, I'm just gonna check on this, so this actually looks good. What I would think about is you're gonna be, you have these two elements, right? You have cookie, you have ice cream. So what are the flavors that you want to go together there? All right, I was thinking, I'm on this like cinnamon raisin kick for some reason. I don't know why I was doing the cinnamon raisin bread. Um, so I was thinking I would do like an oatmeal chocolate chip cookie and then cinnamon ice cream. That sounds like it would go really well together for me. All right, so I just took this out of the mixer. So in here again, three fourths cup of white sugar, three fourths cup of brown sugar, and my uh, two sticks of butter, okay? So I put this in the mixer for not that long. Okay. Uh, obviously, if you're doing it by hand, using a wooden spoon or, or a spatula, it is going to take a little bit longer. But you want everything to come together. And this is why we want room temperature butter. Because if the butter was cold, it, would take, it wouldn't really get all incorporated and smooth and creamy like this. All right, so can you see how smooth this is? I'm gonna take my spatula and I just wanna scrape yeah. down the sides. I wanna scrape down the sides to make sure that there's no um, chunks of butter. So there is, I don't know if you can see this, um, right here, I caught a chunk of butter, okay? See that yellowish bit? So um, this could use a little bit more time in my mixer, so I'm gonna stick it back under. Let me check on this. All right, that looks a lot better take this off. Cool. Okay. So again, all I have in here to create this consistency is my two different sugars and my butter. That's it. And you see how like light and fluffy this is? Okay. So whenever you have a recipe that says sugar and butter, um, they have those listed as ingredients. 
this is the very first step. You want to cream those things together. All right, so now I have two eggs. It's the whole egg. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and add those in. If you're uncomfortable cracking the eggs into your batter, you can crack them into a separate bowl, making sure you don't get any shells or anything, and then put it into, um, into your cookie mix. All right, so I have my two eggs here. Okay, so I'm going to tap it and carefully break the whole egg, right? And throw out the shell and okay and then i'm also at this point before i put it back under the sand mixer i'm going to be adding one teaspoon of vanilla extract okay so i have my vanilla here um, my vanilla might look a little different than yours um, just because i use a vanilla paste but it's essentially the same thing all right, so a full tea, teaspoon, whoop, teaspoon of uh, vanilla extract in. All right, so now I have in my bowl all of my, what's known as our wet ingredients. I have the two sugars, I have the butter, two eggs, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I have not added in my flour, baking soda, or salt yet. That's gonna come in a little bit. All right, I'm gonna put this back under the stand mixer. And you want to make sure that this is fully mixed up. So I want to make sure everything is fully mixed before I start adding in my dry ingredients. I'm going at a low speed. I don't want to go too fast because I don't want the ingredients to go everywhere. And now I can pick up the speed of it. All right, you can start to see it. Now, um, whether or not you're mixing by hand using a stand mixer or electric mixer, whatever. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I have in the middle, it's all incorporating nicely, but on the sides here, I have some of the mix that's sort of sticking to the sides. Like you can see, um, like right here, okay, there's some more solid bits that aren't getting incorporated. I want to make sure it's all mixed in evenly before I start adding in my dries. Okay, so my flour and, and baking soda. So now I have my dries. All right, again, this is my flour. This is my baking soda and my salt. It's all in a separate bowl here and I've just mixed it together. Um, if you haven't mixed it together in a separate bowl, you can all do it all at once in the, uh, in the, your, main mixing bowl with your uh, wet ingredients. I want to add this in very slowly to my mix. And as soon as it's fully incorporated, I can add a little bit more. You don't want to ever over mix your batter. Okay, because that changes the consistency of your cookie. So I'm going to add just a little bit at a time. I'm going to lower my mixer here. So this adding it in in a little bit of a time um, is something you want to do even if you're mixing by hand. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit. Okay, that's it. Rise this up and let's mix this up. So I want it to get fully incorporated in there. I do still have some flour like on a ring on the side. I'll get to that in a second because before I'm completely done and added my chocolate chips and anything else, um, I'm going to scrape down the sides of the bowl again. All right, let's add a little bit more of our flour, baking soda, and salt. Oops. There we go. That's, that's the rest of it. So I did it in two batches. Okay, I'm just gonna slowly increase the speed. Perfect. Okay, that's it. Um, I don't want to overmix it, and right now I'm I'm not seeing large chunks of flour, so I know it's really it's pretty evenly mixed. Um, and I'm gonna be mixing it a little bit by hand in a moment when I go to put in all my mix-ins. So let me scrape all this off. 
scrape off all the cookie dough, resist the urge to lick my um, my paddle attachment. Do it. Oh. Do it. Nope. Oh God, once I start on that, it's like, forget it. Never gonna stop. Okay. No, um, and actually little fun piece of trivia. I always thought the danger of eating raw dough was the egg, was the raw egg. It's not, it's the flour. That's what you have to be careful of. Flour, raw flour, has all sorts of fun bacteria living in it. Oh. So if you ever see a recipe for edible cookie dough and they don't tell you to use heat treated flour or don't have a step to heat, heat treat your flour um, in the recipe, it's not edible. Hmm. So if ever you have a recipe like that, just take your flour, you can stick it in the microwave for like one minute or in an oven on a low temp, and you just got to raise the temperature of the flour to about 160, and that kills off all the bacteria living on it. So in my bowl, I have all my base cooking ingredients. So that's my flour, my baking soda, my salt, my butter, my sugar, both of them, vanilla and eggs. And now I can have fun with it and I can add whatever I want. We want to consider the overall ice cream sandwich. Okay, so I'm doing this cinnamon raisin or cinnamon cookie thing because I'm on this kick. Um, I got my chocolate chips. I'm going to add those in. I'm going to do I'm going to do dark chocolate. I never measure my mix ins. I just pour it in and Whatever sticks in the dough sticks, and if it doesn't, that's fine too. All right, so I'm gonna pour these in. All right, so I got a nice amount of my chocolate chips in there. I'm also gonna add some oats. Okay, so, so just some like old fashioned Quaker oats. You can add whatever you want. Now I wanna mix it. I'm gonna mix it by hand because I don't wanna overdo it. I don't wanna mix the dough too much. Okay, so I'm going to use my spatula here and I'm just mixing it so all the ingredients are all evenly distributed in my cookie dough. All right, so a little secret that I usually do, I'm not going to do it here today. Um, normally at this stage, I would actually refrigerate my dough for about 30 minutes. Um, when you have cookie, when you have a butter based cookie, like a sugar cookie, shortbread cookie, even a cookie dough, which uses butter, um, the butter is in a soft state, right? We had it at room temperature when we added it in and we've been mixing it up. It's been getting warmer as it's um, mixed in with our doughs and every, with our rest of our ingredients. So when we bake it right now, the cookie, that butter is gonna continue to melt even more and it's gonna spread which is fine. Um, but if you want a cookie where it's like a little bit more puffed up, if I was to stick this in the refrigerator for just about 30 minutes, it solidifies that dough. So when I go to put it in the oven, it's going from more solid state um, and not quite melting completely. So the, the cookie stays its shape a little bit better. That's why like if you have a sugar cookie, like the shapes where you're cutting out shapes, every recipe will tell you to chill your cookie dough. Because if the butter is too warm, when it goes too soft, when it goes into the oven, your shapes aren't gonna stay cut out into cookie cutters. And that's when you get the funny Pinterest fail photos of like the weird reindeers that like have eaten too much. They're like fat reindeer cookies. So my cookies are almost ready to go in the oven. I'm not gonna refrigerate them. Um, what I do wanna do is I wanna get a pan and I wanna line it with a uh, parchment paper or a, um, a slip mat. If I don't have either of those things, I can put the cookies directly on the pan. It just, it's gonna be a little bit more clean up for me later. Okay, so if you have parchment paper, it's great. Don't use wax paper, okay? Just don't. Um, wax paper has wax, it'll melt, get on your cookies. Your cookies can't be eaten then. So I always have a baking sheet with parchment. Um, and now you have to scoop your cookies and you put them on to your pan. I have a little cookie scoop. You can use a tablespoon. You can use a regular spoon. You can just use your hands. Okay, about this much right here. Okay, and place it down on my pan in the corner. Okay, so there I have a nice little scoop. 
do another one. Um, you can do about three in a row. You want to keep about two inches in between. Okay, so these are socially distanced cookie dough blobs. And then I'm going to keep going until my whole pan is filled up. I can usually get about 12 cookies onto a sheet. If I didn't want to bake my whole batter, so um, if I only, let's say, wanted one or two cookies, um, I didn't want to bake the full tray, like, you know, dozens of cookies, two dozen cookies this recipe makes, you know, if I didn't want to do that, um, I could scoop the cookies out into this stage, freeze it, and once it's completely frozen, take these little cookie dough balls, throw them into a Ziploc bag, stick them back in my freezer. And then when I decide I want like a cookie, I can just pop one out of the freezer onto a cookie sheet directly into the oven. Okay, and so it's a great way to just like kind of have cookies on demand. I'm gonna pop these in the oven for, it's like eight to 10 minutes. I'm gonna start with eight minutes, check on it, see if it needs more time, okay? Oh, my timer went off and didn't uh, tell me. That's cool. Cool. So my cookies are a little overdone because my timer decided to not make any noise. But that's okay. Um, they, they're a little bit more overdone than I would normally like. So normally I like a lighter cookie. It doesn't look burnt though, so that's good. Um, but I just want to show you, it has a nice little lift to it. Okay, they're nice size, they're pretty consistent. And uh, so normally the color that you're seeing on the top of my cookies is the color that I would want around the base. Okay, so I went a little dark, a little too long on mine. Um, I wanna leave these cooling on the rack for just about 10 minutes before I move them, um, or they can stay on longer, it doesn't matter. And uh, cause as it cools, it's gonna solidify more. So um, I'm gonna set this aside. So here's the cool thing about this ice cream. Um, it's really simple. And um, actually, if you looked at the butter recipe that Miss Linderhoff had on the bottom of the bread recipe, it was like sort of a bonus optional thing. Very similar, except um, we're adding sugar and vanilla to our ice cream. But otherwise, it's the exact same process. So you're going to walk through this with me. And then you'll also know how to make butter. You'll also know how to make whipped cream. Okay, so multi, multi steps. The thing that we're gonna be doing that you don't do for whipped cream or butter is we're gonna end up, once it's all mixed together, we're gonna end up putting it in the um, freezer for like two hours, two to three hours. Okay, so whenever you are making butter or um, whipped cream or ice cream, the milk that you're using is really important because um, we're basically turning, over whipping, our milk to turn it into um, whipped cream, ice cream, or butter, okay? So heavy cream, it's really important that you use heavy cream, all right? If you were to use like a low fat milk or even a whole milk, um, it's not gonna solidify all the way. Um, so it's just not gonna have the right consistency. And if it doesn't have enough fat in it, something like a low fat or skim milk, when you freeze it, it's gonna get this really weird crystallization. If you've ever eaten ice cream and it's almost like grainy, that's what it's gonna be like. Um, just so you know, heavy cream and whipping cream are the exact same thing, okay? So either or totally works. Um, I need one cup of my heavy cream or my whipping cream, okay? put that aside and you want to just make sure it's uh, it's cold All right so I have one cup um, and then I have uh, one and a half tablespoons of sugar I have one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract and then I just want a pinch of salt okay now there's a couple of different ways that you can make this I'm gonna whip it up in my stand mixer so you can see it change but you can put all of these ingredients, so these four ingredients in a mason jar or a Ziploc bag and get the same effect by shaking it. Okay, so if you were in a, using a mason jar, um, like something like this, okay, obviously with a lid, I don't have a lid for this, but if I had a lid for this, I could put everything in and just like uh, shake it like crazy. Um, same thing for a Ziploc bag. 
If you're using a Ziploc bag, make sure it's sealed. You might even want to double bag it just to make sure you're not getting any leaks because you are using a liquid here. And what's going to happen is all of that shaking, whisking, or um, agitation is going to put pump a lot of air into that cream and it's going to have it change its consistency from this complete liquid to something what we call soft peaks or stiff peaks. And I'll show you both of those stages because you'll see those descriptors in a lot of different things, okay? You'll see it for um, whipped cream, you'll see it for if you ever do a meringue, anything like that, you're gonna see those descriptors and I'll show you what that means, um, which is also why I'm using the stand mixer for this because um, it's easier to show you. So again, right in my bowl, one cup, of my heavy cream, I have uh, one and a half tablespoons of sugar and one and a half teaspoons of vanilla um, and a pinch of salt. All right, I'm gonna start off slow, pick up speed. And I'm gonna put my mixer on a high speed. If you are shaking it, you're gonna be shaking it like crazy. So you need to match the speed of my mixer while you're shaking it, okay? other reason I'm using my stand mixer is because I don't have that kind of upper arm strength. Um, but it's a great workout. You can also do it in shifts. So in lists like siblings, you know, shake it until you get tired, send it to your sibling, have them shake it. Okay. We turn up the speed here. All right. So we're starting to see all these bubbles form. I'm going to, you can also use an electric like handheld mixer if you have that. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna start to see the consistency change. Now I'm actually already starting to see it. I don't know if you can tell, but can you see that there's like almost folds happening? Um, so the consistency is already changing because when it was completely liquid, you didn't see that. I'm just gonna stop it for a second. Um, I just wanna show you how this consistency has changed here, all right? Can you see that? It's, it's definitely, it's not, you know, anywhere, it's not near the stiff or um, soft peaks yet, because it's not holding a shape at all, but it's definitely thicker than it was just a second ago, okay? It is not as liquidy as it was when it was just in the measuring cup, okay? So the process happens fairly quick. All right, check that out. Look how that's changing. It's only been a second for me. The consistency has changed again. We are now at what we would like to call soft peaks. All right, so what soft peaks are is, um, I don't know if you can, I'm trying to see if you can see it. When I take my whisk and I lightly touch the top and pull the whisk away, these little peaks, you know, like a little mountain, are coming um, in off of my, uh, my heavy cream but then that tip of the peak is folding over a little bit. So it's not staying straight up. That's what we call soft peaks. Okay, so whenever you see in a recipe that it's calling for soft peaks, that is what it's looking for. This only needs a second or two for it to go from soft to stiff peaks. Um, now, and at that point, we do wanna be careful because if we were to go past stiff peaks, we would get into butter territory, which we do not want butter. All right. All right, so that was, it was just like a second. And now it's, um, it's at our stiff peaks. I'm gonna go just a second longer because I wanna put some cinnamon in here to flavor it for my chocolate chip and oatmeal cookie. So I just have a little bit of cinnamon. I'm not measuring it out. This is completely optional and it's whatever you want your ice cream flavor to be. You can mix in chocolate chips. You can do um, fresh berries in this case, jam, chocolate syrup, peanut butter, nuts, whatever you want. All right, so I'm gonna mix this up. Cool. All right, all right. At this point, I, you wanna taste it because you wanna make sure there's nothing raw in here. There's nothing that's gonna make you sick. <coughs> Um, so you do want to taste it and make sure that there's enough of whatever mix in that you have, that you like the flavor, that it's sweet enough for you. So I'm going to take a clean spoon, just put it in and take a taste. 
I think mine can use a little bit more cinnamon. I'm gonna put this spoon away. If, you, if you're just having the ice cream with just your family, if you're not sharing it with anybody else, you could use the same spoon. But um, if you're planning on sharing it with anyone outside of your family, always use a clean spoon to taste. All right, so I want more cinnamon. I want a stronger flavor. It's always important if you can to taste what you're baking or what you're making along the way. All right, so let's just do this a little bit more. So another way to tell, it's done, okay? It's not going anywhere. It is not falling out of my mixer. So if you can turn your mason jar or your Ziploc bag upside down and nothing comes out, it's done. But if it was in soft peaks or any stage before, it would fall right out of the bowl and onto the floor. So just be careful. All right. Cool. So I have um, a Tupperware container here. If you are using a Ziploc bag or a mason jar, at this point, you can take that and stick it right in the fridge, uh, excuse me, the freezer for two to three hours until it solidifies a little bit more and then it's ready. So if you are um, doing it in uh, a, um, what's it called? In, if, you're, if you're mixing it in a mixing bowl and not in a mason jar or a um, Ziploc, you can transfer it to a Tupperware container and stick this in the freezer for two to three hours until it solidifies. So I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so cookies are done when those are fully cool. And when this has frozen, I can assemble my ice cream sandwiches.